can go to God. Because if Sapphira would have, they questioned her. They gave her a chance to say, well, no, nah, we, you know, we did X, Y, and Z. But because she chose to stand and lie with her husband, she, <laughs> she said, no, she died. She died too. They said, well, you know, the same folks that have been carried your man away and getting ready to carry you away, you out of here. But it wasn't like that in the Old Testament. The whole household had to suffer. You didn't have, it was almost like the wife and children didn't have an opinion of their own. If the husband chose to be disobedient, we just had to follow his disobedience. No. So now I know that if I'm connected to somebody that's trying to pull me out of alignment with the assignment that God has for my life, I can be an individual and say, no, that's not what God said. That's not what he said. And because of your obedience, God will move, and he will move on the behalf of that person, especially when you're praying and laboring for them in prayer. Amen. You just got to make sure you stay in alignment. Amen. You got to make sure you stay in alignment. But a lot of times we allow people in our ear, we allow what? People, places, and things to change our positioning when it comes to God. And this is what gets us out of alignment. And so we know that um, Adam, was placed in the garden. And as he was placed in the garden, God told him, listen, I want you to tend and I want you to keep it. He gave him an assignment and he had to stay connected to the assignment. And he had to do everything that God had required him to do in order for him to reap the next reward that God had for him. Every time I think about God sending Eve to Adam, I always think about God, because the, the, the Bible says that God told him to be fruitful, multiply, and gave him dominion and all that stuff. After he told him, listen, it's not good for man to be alone. So I got to send him and help me. So it wasn't until the woman came along that God was saying, now you can be fruitful and multiply because you got somebody to come into agreement with. Now you can have dominion because you got somebody you can come into agreement with. So I believe because of Adam's obedience, because of his faithfulness and managing and maintaining what God had already given him, I believe God wanted to reward him. And there are some of us that are waiting and asking God for that next level of reward, and it hasn't come yet because we're not properly managing, which is good stewardship, over what God has given us. Because we, whenever we hear good stewardship, we don't realize even when not even good stewardship is your body. Making sure that you take care of the temple of God. That's you having good stewardship. And this is what God wanted to see. And God had to take me back throughout my life and show me. I was telling a friend the other day, I said, it was at one point, I said, now people never really knew my situation. At one point for months, I lived on $278 with two kids. But people didn't know it because I managed it well. Then I told myself when I left my job, when God told me to leave my job, I said, I'm a single mother with two kids. But when I left my job, before I went, I didn't go to unemployment. I didn't do any of that. I, didn't, the, I had enough money to live off of for almost two years. And I told her, I said, I met these two young ladies, and I just thought they was just all that. You know, they had a nice little shape. They, they was 30 some years old, still virgins, nice women of God, you know, good Christian women, know the word and everything. But when it came down to their home life, there was always like, they lived, they lived together, rent $750 a month, and they got to split that. They both got good jobs, and I wasn't even working. And, they, and when they walked away, they had to move out of the apartment. And when they moved out, they owed the landlord almost $3,000. But here I am, a single mother not working with a cardinal of $400 and some dollars a month. When I walked away from my apartment, I didn't owe anything. And I never understood that. But God showed me, he said, it's because I've given you good stewardship and you followed along with it. People who walk in good stewardship, not only do they follow protocol, but they save. Even if you got, like right now, I don't even work, but I know the benefits of having a savings account, so what do I do? I put $5 into an interest account every time I get the money because I understand the benefit of if I can just save something, even though I can't do what I want to do, but I got to save something. People who have good stewardship, they prioritize. 
They prioritize, which means there is, if, if, like Pastor, he said, you know, um, can everybody meet tomorrow? Everybody on the board meet tomorrow. I'm thinking to myself, well, tomorrow is my daughter's birthday, you know? But what I like to do is prioritize stuff, not to what came first, but I prioritize to what's most important. So now I say, well, my daughter got out of school, we gonna kick it, we gonna say happy birthday, and when seven o'clock come, I will be at the meeting. Because let me prioritize what's important. That's having good stewardship, and a lot of us, we don't do that. We don't do that, and sometimes we don't do it because we don't know. We don't know to do that, you know? And, and so um, good stewardship is one of the things that God is requiring in this hour, and he told me, he said, stop sacrificing. The things that I've given you to manage, to sow, or to connect to things that you think may be good ground. So a lot of times when it comes to even ministry, we'll connect to a ministry because we see this is a ministry on what? On the move. They going somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? The word is good. I'm being fed. This is good ground. So I'm going to sow my time, my energy, and my resources into this ministry. So I'm going to sacrifice the assignment that God had me on where I was just in a position where I was managing something little to, to connect to something that's big and ain't nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, it's something wrong. It ain't nothing wrong with the place. It's a good ground place. God is moving in that place also. He's moving. But you sacrifice your assignment over here to manage the little that God has given you to connect to something that's big. Something you feel like may be going somewhere, but you're still yet in disobedience. You're still in disobedience. And so we have to really tell ourselves that. Remember that. Don't sacrifice what God has given you to manage. To be obedient to something that may be good ground. Because it may not be for you to connect to that. So there are three different areas and we're going to deal with just one. We're going to deal with just one, and then we're going to close. Um, we're going to deal with that. I said I was going to be. <laughs> Did I just do that? <laughs> okay, three different areas um, that um, deals with alignment, and two of them we're going to talk about on next week. We're going to close out with those two next week. The first one is ownership, responsibility, and accountability. When you don't have these three things in your life, when you haven't fully embraced these, th these three things in your life, it's going to affect your positioning. It's going to cause you to always be out of alignment with your assignment that God has given you. Ownership, anything, anytime you connect to anything, you got to take ownership of it. It has to be yours. It's just like when I, when I worked at Northwestern Hospital, I had to take ownership of whatever position they had given me. You know what I mean? And so I worked at the, um, I was one of the cooks, so I worked downstairs a lot. But there are times where I had to come upstairs and I had to work out in an opening with people. So I had to treat the company like it was my company. So I had to tell myself, listen, if I um, push the customers away, people, then people do that all the time. They push, they say things to push the company away because they tell themselves, it's not my company. Well, when you take ownership of it, it is your company. It is your company. And so the people will come in and they will have an issue with why something, it, the, why something is the way that it is. And so my, my response will always be to explain to them, well, you know, the changes were made to better suit. Or do you have any suggestions? Maybe I can take back and blah, 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 blah that. Some people won't like that. Some people went, it ain't me. Well, you know, you need to go talk to management. This ain't, you know, this ain't my company. You know what I mean? When you don't take ownership on what God has given you, it'll show up in your attitude. You won't give as much as you think you give it in terms of, and I'm not talking about finances. I'm talking about of your time, your resources, your energy. You won't give into much of that. That's why I told people before, I said, when it comes to social media, tell people about the ministry. When you take ownership of it, you feel like if I don't post today, then people not going to come. Why? Because you're taking ownership 
of the ministry. You take our ownership of the vision. So if it don't grow, you feel like it's on me. And I told God, I said, God, I'm so tired of people thinking that they can assume, you know, this whole generation will, they always talk about what the church isn't doing and what people aren't doing. A lot of people that have left the church are saying, oh, the church needs to go outside of the four walls. But when have you went outside of the four walls? How often do you go outside of the four walls? And so I told God, I said, we cannot properly assume the responsibility for what needs to be done until we position ourselves to take responsibility for what's not, not being done. So when you, I'm the, I'm the type of person that I take, you know what, it is what it is. I was wrong, I shouldn't have did it. You know what I mean? You the leader. You assume that responsibility because you've taken ownership over whatever position that God has given you, just like with the praise team. What, what, what didn't happen? What they, what, yeah, they did something? Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Baby, God may pull him to the side. Listen, y'all done got me in trouble. You know what I mean? Because he going to come to me. Why? Because he put me in a position to lead them. I'm not going to buck against authority and say, well, so-and-so ain't doing their part. That's, that, 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 we, that lets me know right then and there. You got a whole lot of growing to do when it comes to leadership. Just take responsibility. But the first part of taking responsibility is taking ownership. Ownership. And when you take ownership of whatever it is that God has given you, then you can assume the responsibility when something does not go right or even when something going right. We want the recognition for it when it's going good. We want the recognition. We want to be recognized. We want people to be able to say, you know what, well, man, sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, he did his thing. You know, when we don't get the recognition, we ready to leave. We tired of people stealing our credit. We the ones did that. We the ones that, but when it come time to assume the responsibility, we don't want to take it. So we can't ask for recognition if, you know, we're not willing to assume the responsibility for when it all falls down. But all of this is a sign that you are out of alignment. You're out of alignment. In order for you to follow this system of ownership, responsibility, and even um, having that accountability, it means that you know who you are. It means that you know who you're supposed to be. And it means you've connected with it in such a way that you are in agreement with it. You agree with, with where they're headed. And so Galatians 4 and 1 says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all but is under guardianship and stewards until the time appointed by his father. Now, it's important that I read that because we are all heirs. And everything has been given to us. And we rely on it. We go around preaching and teaching and making sure everybody know that we are kingdom and we got, we, we got rights to have this and rights to have that. You can have all the rights to the world that you know you have. But if you don't have good stewardship, God is going to place you under somebody. He's going to place you under somebody. It's just like your child. I said, okay, since I'm fixing my credit, since I'm fixing my credit, then why don't I put my kids Order them credit cards. Put them on my credit. They not going to know they got it. When it comes, as a matter of fact, I'll just cut it up. Because every time I use my card and it increases my credit and I'm paying my bills on time, it increases their credit. So by the time they get 18 years old, they got an 800 credit score. This is what, yeah, this is what the other cultures do. This is how their children have these good, is able to live off credit and they be in so much debt by the time they're 25. Not just because of college tuition, but because their parents put them on their credit card. So, as even though you're an heir and even though you're master of everything that you have, because you don't know how to manage the little bit you've been given, now I gotta put you under somebody. I got to make sure you, you, you don't govern your body, you don't govern your mindset, you don't govern your hearing, you let everybody tell you everything. So now I got to make sure that somebody is there to guide you where you need to go. When it comes to money, um, I, like I told my daughter, every time you give her money, she's careless with it, so she loses it. So now she knows that when anybody give her money, she got to come and give it to me. And even when she go to school. I can get Trey Ryan five dollars on Monday. On Thursday, he probably got four dollars. I may spend a dollar a day. I got to manage what I have. To sign you, she coming home. You give her twenty dollars on Monday. It's gone on Monday. She didn't spend it on junk. 
She didn't bought everybody and their mama something because she don't know how to manage what she's been given. So now I told her, I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you $5 on Monday. But when, but when that Monday come and I say, here's